Hello and welcome to Runkle of the Bailey. My name is Ian Runkle. I'm a Canadian criminal defense and firearms lawyer. Had an idea for a game I'd play. I'd get my viewers to suggest some kind of store and then I'd go there and see if I can buy something that is defined as a firearm in Canadian law. So now many of these might be 84 sub 3 firearms, so the same category as pellet guns, paintball guns, that kind of thing. But so long as it counts as a firearm under section 2 of the criminal code, which is something that discharges a projectile that can cause serious bodily injury or death. So the first suggestion I got, I put this out on Twitter. Uh, you can leave suggestions. I'll try to do this again. So leave suggestions in the comments below if you've got an idea for where this might be, uh, where this might be a challenge. But the first suggestion I got was for a pet store. So challenge accepted. Let's see what I came up with. What I have here is the Nerf Dog Tennis Ball Launcher. So this fires tennis balls so that your dog can chase after them. It's good for play, it's good for exercise, all of that. You can see it's got sort of a tube on the top and a trigger. So very much sort of gun styling. This bottom piece here is, you might think it's a magazine, but it's actually really a compartment because it doesn't feed into the gun itself. It just lets you uh, store them and then drop them into your hands. You can see down there's a tube with a spring and a sort of launcher cup and that you slide this part up, you pull that back, and then this thing is ready to fire. Now, if you recall from previous videos, I'm just gonna go over this again. The test for whether or not something counts as a firearm under section two of the criminal code is can it fire, is it a barreled item that can fire a projectile that can cause serious bodily injury or death? And the test that is used to determine if it could cause serious bodily injury or death is can it puncture a pig eye? So I've got some pig eyes. We're gonna do some legal testing. I'm sorry, this may be a little gross, but that's the test. That's the legal test for this. Now, before I get to that, I do want to read, this thing comes with some warning stickers on it. So I wanna read those out because I think they're somewhat relevant here. We see, warning, never look down the barrel of the blaster. They're describing it as a barrel. I'm gonna come back to that a little later because some people had some comments about that on a previous similar video. So we'll talk about that a little later. There's another lengthier one and it's sort of over here. I'm gonna read that one in its entirety. Before use, read and understand all instructions. Inspect the tennis ball blaster for damage. Do not use if any part is damaged. Intended for dog exercise and training purposes only. Do not operate indoors indented for outdoor use only. Only pull back the cocking handle when you're ready to launch the ball. Keep fingers away from trigger until ready to fire. Never aim directly at people, animals, or anything that may be injured or damaged by the ball. Adult supervision is highly recommended when children are present. Use eye protection. Do not aim at eyes or face. Tennis ball may fly in unexpected directions. Balls traveling at high speeds can cause serious injury. Use only with designated Nerf dog ball toys. And then there's some copyright information, some rights information, and so forth. So just looking at these warning labels, we already have an inkling that maybe this might be a gun in Canadian law. They claim, you know, never look down the barrel of the blaster. So they're saying that this thing has a barrel. We can talk about that as well. They also say, may cause serious injury. Well, if it can cause serious bodily injury, then that would meet the test for it being a firearm in law. Now, we can't necessarily just trust this label, right? They, they tend to be more cautious on warning labels than maybe the product actually justifies. But there are a lot of warnings here, and some of them are very much firearm-like warnings when we think about it. You know, keep fingers away from trigger until ready to fire. That's a very standard gun safety rule. So we've got gun safety rules being applied to this Nerf dog ball launcher. You know, do not point at anything you're not willing to destroy is basically paraphrased here with never aim directly at people, animals, or anything that may be injured or damaged by the ball. Hmm. So that raises some interesting questions. And to test all of these out, I of course have my wonderful assistant, Mort who is going to assist us because we need, in order to properly do the eyeball test, we need a structure for them. You know, your eyes, in order to see if they're going to be punctured by something we fire out of this dog ball launcher, your eyes aren't sort of floating out in space and they're not sitting on a table or anything like that. 
they're in your skull. They've got a structure. They've got, you know, a protective sort of uh, element to them. And so one of the things just right off the hop is when we look at the skull here and we envision an eye in it, I'll put one in later. I'm not, I don't think we're going to be able to do anything with just the tennis ball itself. It doesn't seem like it, it just doesn't fit inside the, uh, the orbit there. So we're probably not going to be able to do anything with the tennis ball itself. The question then comes up, what kind of modifications can we do? Because something is a firearm not only, whoops, I'm dropping tennis balls all over the place here, not only if it's capable of causing serious bodily injury or death, but also if it's readily adaptable to be a firearm. So that means we can theoretically make some changes to this. The question, of course, comes up, how many changes can we make? Because in theory, if you've got enough time and resources, you can turn a mountain into a gun. You know, you'd have to build mines and smelters and all of that, but in theory, it can be done. So there's got to be some sort of reasonable limit. What I really want to do is modify this as little as possible, and ideally none. But there's nothing saying that we can't modify the projectiles. So we're going to try some different projectiles and see if we can use this to puncture an eyeball. And if so, this thing's a gun. And I'll discuss the implications of that a little later as well. So that said, on with the testing. So you can see we've got the eye here. I'm sounding a little muffled because, of course, want to protect my eyeballs. The whole point of this is to see, can I puncture an eyeball? So I want to make sure that the eyeball punctured is not mine. Now I'm just going to try just a standard, these are the Nerf dog dog balls. They're basically, I think, just a tennis ball, but they want you to use their branded ones. All right, so we're just going to try this from right up close. Got a little bit of bracing here. Pull that out. Eyeball seems perfectly fine to me. I mean, I wouldn't want to have been hit by that, but I don't think this is anything that is going to... Uh, this eye is fine. So far, this is a failure. The tennis balls didn't puncture the eyeball or flatten it or destroy it in any fashion. So this doesn't appear yet to show that we can cause serious bodily injury or death with a projectile fired from this item. But we're not done yet. I mean, I picked this thing out because I thought probably that it would count as a firearm. So I'm going to do some more testing and see if we can get there. So I've got a fresh eye in here. This is not the same one that was used before. And I'm not an engineer, so I'm just sort of doing some very rough improvisation. What I've got here is a dart. So this is just a, a standard bar dart. And I've got some pool noodle. And I've cut the pool noodle in half. And I've put a little groove here so that we've got a little uh, set, sabot there for this. So there we go. This is our projectile. Got a dart hidden inside, and what we're gonna do charge the Nerf uh, dog ball launcher, and of course we're violating all of their safety rules here. So let's give this a go. All right, so the first time, it doesn't appear that that was on target. And this, this is not exactly the best for aiming, but we're gonna try again. Yeah, there 
use the dart. This one's pretty beat up. Let's try another fresh dart. All right, no luck. So no luck with the darts. And it was kind of disappointing because I was sure the darts were going to do it. When I was testing them beforehand, I was able to fire them a pretty good distance into wood. But no luck when I actually tried firing them at the actual eyeball. So you win this time, eyeball, but I'm still not done. So this is what I'm going to try now. It's a tennis ball with a great big nail stuck through it. Now, if I just put this in the Nerf Dog Ball Launcher as it is, this thing is going to jam it up. So I'm just going to use a little bit of, again, the same pool noodle. And we're just going to uh, see if this will let us puncture an eyeball here, because that's really our goal. You can see that the nail knocked a great big hole in that thing. That eye is pretty badly messed up. Can I find my nail? Uh, that said, We've already taken a few runs at this eye, so let's maybe try a fresh one just so that we can see if that was the issue. Again, big honking nail. Remember, the Nerf Corporation strongly recommends against doing every single thing that I'm doing here. seems to have survived. Aside from being a bit of wily e. Coyote levels of technology, the tennis ball with a nail through it was a partial success. I was able to put a hole in an eyeball, but it took two hits. What I really wanted is something that would do it on a first hit, something that would give me a clean eyeball puncture so that I can say, yes, this thing definitely counts as a firearm. So I had one more idea that I thought I'd try. Let's have a look. Now I certainly wouldn't want to get stuck with this. We're just going to try this from right up close here. And that, I think, is the end of that eyeball. That just went right through. So that's the first time I've really had proper hit on target. That arrow is tipped with a target tip, so it comes to a sharp metal point. And when firing that, not only did it punch right through that eyeball, but also through the skull behind it. Now, this is a plastic skull, not bone. I don't know how it compares to an actual human skull. I've got one, but it's not available for testing, so we're not going to know that. 
That said, I feel fairly confident in saying that this thing can fire a projectile that is capable of causing serious bodily injury or death. You know, punching right through that eyeball, that's enough. So the next thing I kind of want to know is what the muzzle velocity is on this, because if it fires over 152.4 meters per second, then we're talking about a full firearm that you need a firearms license for. And in fact, at that point, I'd be in a lot of trouble because now that we've determined that this thing's a firearm, it's fairly clear that it falls into the category of being a prohibited firearm. The reason why is that the recent order in council barred large bore firearms. And the bore on that is substantial. You know, it's tennis ball sized. So this is a prohibited firearm, which would mean it would be illegal to own unless it falls into the 84 sub 3 exception. So I'm really going to be hoping here that it falls under 152.4 meters per second. Let's have a look with the chronograph. And I'll just note that this chronograph is tuned to meters per second. It's not uh, feet per second. So let's have a look. So this clocks in at just a little faster than 12 meters per second, which is good. It means I'm not going to jail because that's well within the range that makes this count as an 84 sub 3 firearm. So the same classification as many BB guns, paintball guns, t-shirt launchers, that kind of thing. So it's legal to own this and to possess it without a license. So you might be saying, Runkel, why do we care then? If I can go and buy this and I don't need a firearms license, what does it matter if it's considered a firearm? there are some substantial implications here. One of them is that everything that's considered a firearm, even an 84 sub 3 firearm, is automatically considered a weapon in Canadian law. So if you have bail conditions or probation conditions that say that you can't have weapons, then you can't have this Nerf dog ball launcher. Most people would be fairly surprised to think of that. Similarly, if you have a firearm prohibition, either because of a criminal conviction or perhaps just because you had mental health issues and they felt that you shouldn't have guns, then it would actually be a fairly serious criminal offense for you to have this dog ball launcher. The courts have confirmed that 84 sub 3 firearms count against firearm prohibitions. They did that in the, you know, when they were considering like BB guns and airsoft guns. But the legal logic is inescapable. If this dog ball launcher is a firearm, and it appears that it is, then you can't have one if you've got a firearm prohibition. We can go a step further. Let's say that you want to play a prank on your neighbor. And so you take the dog ball launcher and you bounce a few balls off his house so that he's going to hear the noise and wonder what it is. Well, you could theoretically be charged and convicted of the offense of discharging a firearm at an occupied dwelling house, which has a mandatory minimum. Right now, the Supreme Court is actually considering whether that mandatory minimum should hold up, because one of the things that they're thinking about is, does it make sense to have that mandatory minimum if you're thinking about something like a paintball gun or a, you know, a BB gun, rather than something like a rifle? Maybe we should add dog ball launcher to the, you know, what they're thinking about here. And when I think of this in the sense of the dog ball launcher question, I will note that 12 meters per second is, you know, what we got as timing. But looking it up online, a tennis serve uh, can easily go to, you know, more than 50 meters per second. It seems very strange that you would not face really serious charges and certainly not a mandatory minimum if you were to serve a tennis ball against somebody's house. You know, maybe if you cause some damage, they might charge it as a mischief. But if you fire it with the dog ball launcher, now you're talking about a, a serious crime with potentially serious mandatory minimum penalties. That doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me, but that's where the law might end up with you know, once the Supreme Court makes its decision on that one. Kind of a, a yikes sort of situation. 
The other thing I said I'd address, and I guess now is as good a time as any, is the question of a barrel. Because in the last video, when I was talking about this uh, sort of little self-defense trinket, and I say self-defense, you know, as generously as possible here, people said, is this really a barrel? Because it's kind of a slot. It's not the sort of traditional aspect. So there's a couple of things here. First, looking at dictionary definitions, uh, barrel has been sort of defined in a lot of places as just a tube that a projectile travels down. But that's not really the only thing I'm looking at when I'm thinking that barrel would probably be described broadly by the uh, broadly by the courts. Uh, first, the courts tend to try to avoid interpretations that are going to uh, result in excluding bad behavior. So I suspect that they would include uh, a barrel for something like this simply because this is kind of a thing you fire darts potentially at people at. But the other sort of consideration that comes up here and the other thing I was looking at in the law, and that is, I'm just going to switch over here. So this is from the criminal code in the firearms and other weapons sections, the definitions. Crossbow, and they spell crossbow in the criminal code with a hyphen, although not with a hyphen in some other places, it's weird. But they say, means a device with a bow and a bowstring mounted on a stock that is designed to propel an arrow, a bolt, a quarrel, or any similar projectile on a trajectory guided by a barrel or groove, and that is capable of causing serious bodily injury or death to a person. Now, a barrel for a crossbow is not going to be the sort of, you know, barrel for a firearm that holds pressure. So because barrel is contemplated in the you know, in the context of a crossbow, barrel seems to be interpreted by the criminal code more broadly as any sort of tube that the projectile travels along and probably a tube that it's guided by in some fashion. That's what I'd probably say is the criteria, you know, that the tube guides the projectile in some fashion and that it travels through it to be fired. So with the dog ball launcher, it seems to meet the criteria, assuming that the courts would interpret it, you know, broadly, which I think that they would. That said, if you actually put the dog ball launcher question in front of them, the courts might be looking for any excuse to get away from this particular, uh, the weird implications. But it would really depend on context to see how the court would be kind of inclined to find. You know, if you're talking about something where somebody was firing a dog ball launcher and hit somebody's house, the court might be inclined to say, let's try to not get to the, you know, the weird situation of a mandatory minimum here, and let's try to rule that it's not a firearm. But, you know, if you were firing at people, for instance, with that arrow setup that I'd built, the court would be a lot more inclined to say, hey, this is a firearm. Context does weigh in when courts are making these kinds of determinations. Anyway, so I am going to put this squarely as a win in the category of can I find a firearm at the pet store? I think I did. And I think I've made a pretty good case for why this counts. So if you have an idea for another place that you think would be a challenge for me to go and find a firearm, let me know in the comments. I will do this again. We will have another round of, can I find a firearm at place? But I think pet store is a big check mark. So let me know what you think. I mean, maybe you think that this is wrong, or maybe like me, you think, hey, this is correct in the sense of a correct interpretation of the law, but it's bizarre. I mean, the law on firearm stuff often takes us to these bizarre places. And yeah. So I'm just kind of trying to shine a light on that because I think it's a very, very weird circumstance. Anyway, as I said, let me know in the comments below what you think or if you've got a place that you think would be a, a challenge. Um, some people, when I put this question out on Twitter initially, were saying hardware store. I'm not going to do hardware store. Hardware store is too easy. I can just walk into the shelf, you know, walk into the aisles and pick up a nail gun and I'm done. So... Hardware store, too easy. Make it harder than that, please. Um, other than that, please like this video. Please share it with your friends. Uh, subscribe to see more content. If you want, uh, I should note here as well, 
This is not a sponsored video. I am not getting anything from Nerf, except possibly Nerf might be pissed at this, but this is their product, so I'm not misusing their trademark, but I don't think they're going to be happy about this at all. So, yeah, this is not, uh, you know, if the YouTube censors are watching, this is not a paid sponsorship kind of thing. This is kind of the opposite. I suspect I'm going to be ticking some people off. I also have a link to my Patreon below, so if you want to contribute, that's one way you can do it. I want to thank my Patreon supporters at the $50 level, Jonathan Wheeler, Jason Elliott, Canada's National Firearms Association, Kyle Martin, Jean-Guy Toussaint, Ivo Nedev, the CCFR, and the Canadian Shooting Sports Association. At the $30 level, uh, Sights and Arms Limited and Mark olivier Demour. And at the $20 level, uh, Raymond L. McKinnon, Matt Ward, Mark Whittington, Dale Nesbitt, Cameron Johnson, and Andrew Elsich. Thank you as well to my $10 supporters who will be in the crawl immediately following. Thank you for watching, and I hope this has armed you with knowledge and possibly a dog ball launcher, I will say. Uh, my dogs actually really like the dog ball launcher, so no regrets on that purchase. It's maybe not, it's not going to be my favorite gun, I will tell you that, but I don't mind it. It's, it's a good gun for what it's, you know, what it's for. Anyway, see you next time. Thank you.